Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. We're going to go live in just about two minutes. Well, actually, of course, we are live right at the moment, but we will get into the program in about one minute, 40 seconds. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, here in southern Ontario, the uh, weather was, I'd say, spectacular. Um, really nice weather which was uh, kind of nice uh, because boy don't we all need a break to get rid of this um, you know we've all been stressed for the last 18 months and uh, it's been really nice just to get a break and to get some nice weather to be healthy uh, at least I'm healthy and uh, to be able to get out it's been positive. Get going here with the agenda in just one minute. Again, it's going to be a short one. About 10 minutes today is what I estimate. We'll see how much I can get squeezed into a 10-minute live presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... We shall get going. It was a great weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed the weekend. Saturday I was working, um, pretty much worked all day, put a good eight or ten hours in on Saturday. Uh, but Sunday I did not step foot in the office. <laughs> it was wonderful not to uh, step foot in the office. It has been quite a few days since that actually happened, that I haven't stepped foot in the office. So there we go. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. Good day, good day, good day. The secrets of safety dog. Woohoo! All right, what are we going to be talking about today? Um, welcome to an episode of The Secrets of Safety Dog. And we've, uh, and I will have a pro tip for you in this segment as well. And if you are getting value from this whole thing, I, I love my yellow truck. If you're getting value from this, you might consider liking and subscribing, uh, giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment. What topics would you like me to attack to share uh, for you? What would you like me to talk about? I would love to hear um, your comments in the comments as to what you would like me to talk about and of course what could possibly go wrong while you do, are doing live presentations so there there we go all right on with the presentation it was a long weekend hallelujah and the weather here in southern Ontario was awesome 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 and uh, if you are from Canada Happy Canada Day. And of course, if you are from the States, um, happy 4th of July. Wonderful holiday weekend for both countries. Loved it. Uh, I went down, I'm so lucky to live here in southern Ontario in wine country. Uh, Tina and I went down for some wine tasting. Uh, hit some of our favorite vineyards and did a little wine tasting. If you live here in southern Ontario, I would encourage you to get down there and visit the little guys. Uh, this was taken at Peller. Um, Peller, of course, is not one of the little guys, uh, but it is one of our favorite wineries. Uh, but we also go to De Simone, De Simone uh, a very small winery. Awesome vintages, awesome wines. And Vince there, uh, who owns De Simone Winery, uh, is a really wonderful person and so we always try to stop at uh, De Simone when we're down there drop a few dollars there to make sure that Vince survives and stays in business uh, great wine anyways and uh, Andrew Stacy um, he is a safety guy out in Calgary and Andrew posted on uh, in truck safety managers website on Facebook uh, about this court and I th first of all I would like to say Elena uh, I won't say your last name she lost her life in the accident that we are going to talk about uh, because we are going to talk about the results of the the truck driver but let's not forget 
that in this tragic accident, there was a loss of life. Uh, and that's the most important thing to remember. However, the truck driver, and I won't mention the truck driver's name because this is the important person when we are talking about crashes, not the truck driver. Um, the truck driver was found guilty here in Southern Ontario, guilty of dangerous driving causing death. And the, I put a link in the show notes down below. And the reason I think this is really important is that truck drivers need to understand the responsibility that they have. I mean, any vehicle operator could have been found guilty of this, but it's especially true for truck drivers. I believe we are held to a higher standard than um, car drivers. And so when we are held to a higher standard, we need to make sure that we are doing just that, driving in accordance with the law, paying attention, and not committing this offense. So dangerous driving. Um, it ended up that this driver got convicted and has been sentenced to three years in a Canadian penitentiary. I'm sure that's devastating to both the driver and to the driver's family. Obviously not as devastating to the, uh, to the victim. They don't care that this person is spending three years in a penitentiary, but truck drivers, be aware that this is the results that you can have too. And the judge quoted a BC court and their findings and what they did to the driver out in BC. This is important because this demonstrates that Canada-wide, we are starting to become tougher on truck drivers when they commit offenses and have a loss of life involved. So I really think truck drivers need to be um, aware of that. So that's that. Uh, approved ELDs, yeah, we're in Canada and we have an ELD law that says you gotta use an approved ELD and here is the list of approved ELDs. Pardon? You say there's nothing on the screen? Well, that's true because there are no approved ELDs yet. And I did put the link to the approved uh, Canada, Transport Canada's website where they do have the list of ELDs down uh, in the show notes. So if you wanna click on that to see that there are no approved ELDs yet, here we are July the 5th, the law kicked in June the 12th. So almost a month in, three weeks in, and we still have no way to meet the law. So. Who was on the Dog on a Trucking podcast? Well, it was me talking about how to control your insurance costs. So that's last week's. This week, uh, we are re-interviewing uh, a friend of mine, Ron Zima. Ron Zima from the Idle Free, or uh, the Idle Free website. And we're going to be talking to Ron again about what's happened in the year and a half since I first interviewed Ron. And so that's coming up this Friday at 10 a.m. That'll be released. And it's a great interview with Ron Zima of Idle Free. Because um, I really think as, look at the BC fires that are going on at the moment. Uh, the, BC, the Western Canada heat wave that's going on at the moment. The Many people are saying this is all a result of environment and how we are not taking care of our world. And so certainly one of the things that we can do to take care of our world is to idle less when it makes sense, as Ron says. And so I, I really like promoting Ron and his cause because a lot of class eight trucks could reduce the amount that they idle. I don't believe we can ever eliminate it 100%, but we can certainly reduce it. So uh, think about that. That's what's um, coming on. So, hey, oh, this doesn't show up very well, does it? Anyways, we're getting into the pro tip. All right, what's the pro tip? Oh, we're already at 10 minutes. Oh my goodness, this won't take us long. We're at the pro tip already. In regards to references, um, in the States, they have Regulation 3, 
91.23. And Dave Kennedy sent me a message. Uh, Dave's not watching, but Dave Kennedy sent me a message. Dave is a former MTO officer. Anyways, investigations, inquiries. Uh, 391.23 says that you've got to do reference checks or history checks. And my pro tip for this week is it says right in the regulations that you must report failures. So in you must report failures to in most places in my area, Hamilton. We got to report it to Buffalo uh, DOT office. So you got to keep a copy of the failure. So you've got to try. So somehow you've got a document that you tried to get the references and then keep a copy of the failure. And on the second request, I would put a note on it and say something like, hey, as per FMCSA 391.23, Section 3, please respond. That's kind of polite. Uh, and then on the third and my final attempt, I would say something to the effect of, hey, I'm going to follow the instructions as per Regulation 391.23 and I will be forced to report you to the DOT office. I would put something like that on the third request, trying to stimulate a response, and if I don't get a response, then I will follow through and report the failure, because here's the problem. What if they didn't report something to you, they failed to respond, and had they responded, they would have provided you with information that meant you wouldn't have hired that truck driver. And this particular truck driver has a crash and kills somebody. And had you done the proper investigation, you would have known about um, something that would have disqualified them for your company to hire them. The problem now is now you've got to defend yourself. You've got to try to say, well, I did request it. And if you don't have great documentation and you didn't try to push these people, then I think you might be considered in trouble. So you want to have great documentation that you did the requests and wouldn't it be awesome if you could prove that, hey, I did report them to Federal Motor Carrier and what did they do about it? All right, so that's it, I believe, for this week. Yes, that's the end of the slide. Yay! Let me go back to that. So that's it for um, the secrets of safety dog this week uh, the secret this week or my pro tip this week was how to get more references completed and by stimulating on the second and third request you can see what i suggest you do all right that's it for this week i hope and i pray that you had a great long weekend i certainly did and uh, wine tasting was awesome happy canada day happy fourth of july and wishing you all the best in health and wealth all right, that's it. Safety dogs out.